Hello everybody, welcome to another watercolor tutorial. We are going to be painting this very mystical um, forest painting that is inspired by a photo that I saw by Dasi Neem, which I will include in the description as I do. And the first thing we're going to do is cover, well, first you can just pencil in an oval shape in um, portrait position on your watercolor piece of paper. And now I'm just grabbing some black uh, watercolor. I'm preparing it and watering it down quite a bit. And I'm also going to mix in a tiny bit of blue into that black. Then I'm going to rinse my brush and cover my oval in a layer of water and mine is tinted a little bit from the blue that I just had on my paintbrush that's okay and before I continue on I'm going to erase my pencil marks just a little bit so so that I can see them but that they're not uh, as intense as here because obviously I don't want it to show through. It helps to actually have a tint on your paper because then you know what you've painted already. So like by all means, tint your water or just pick up like a little bit of really watered down blue. There we go. And now we can pick up that kind of bluish black mixture and start applying it to the bottom half edges of our oval. This kind of reminds me of the technique that we used for my wood, the wood slice tutorials that I released not too long ago for the forest. Um, I'm just going to make it a little bit darker in some areas. Remember that watercolor dries uh, lighter than what it looks like when it's wet. So from my experience, it's better to go like a little bit more darker than you're comfortable with because it's going to dry to what you want it to be. So mine looks a little bit more egg shaped than I want it to look. But it is what it is. Okay. So I am going to let this half dry. I don't want it to dry all the way because I am going to add some um, lines that extend uh, vertically that are going to be trees but I want them to fade into the background so that they look like they're growing in the distance so just let it dry halfway I would say so it's still so it's not soaking wet like mine is right now but um, but it's still a little bit damp and then we can come back to it so I think mine's about half dry or even a little bit too dry that's okay. Um, so I'm picking up the same color that we used earlier, but uh, even, oh no, I'd say it's about the same in terms of how much I've watered it down. And we're going to paint just a few vertical lines for trees in the background. So uh, it's going to start from the bottom and just extend upwards like this. downwards and then I'm gonna have one more maybe here and then we're gonna let this completely dry okay now that it's completely dry I'm taking those original colors I used which is blue mixed with black but they're gonna be a lot more intense this time um, like I'm not watering them down as much. And we're going to be painting these beautiful trees that extend way beyond our oval. And that's what's going to make it look really, uh, really cool. So um, 
I am just going to grab a smaller brush. I'm just using my size one because I want to make sure that I get the uh, bottom details down because I don't want it to go past. <clears throat> so this first tree is going to extend, uh, I'm going to say there's a little bit more room on this side. So I'm going to have one that extends beyond the oval upwards and one whose roots extend downwards. So this one's going to go like this. I'm going to have a branch coming out. Again, this is where I switched to my size one, just to make sure that it doesn't go beyond the uh, oval here. And you can have as many branches coming off of your trees as you would like. So now my roots. I have actually, I don't think I've ever painted uh, roots of trees. So this could go one of two ways. I'm going to make it like a stockier version of the tops of trees that I paint. That didn't quite turn out how I wanted it to, but it'll do. It will be fine that way. So one thing that I'm, I'm going to kind of backtrack a little bit here. I am taking the same color, but I'm watering it down again. Quite a bit. And I want to paint more background details because those two trees that we painted earlier, they just really faded completely into the background which isn't like a big deal. We can just go over with some more details. So I'm using my smaller brush here and I'm just painting a few trees that go upwards. I'll have another one on the left side here. They don't all have to have branches coming off of them because if all of them have branches coming off of them, it might look a little bit too cluttered. So I'm just going to have that middle one probably that has the branches. Just kidding. <laughs> So here I'm using that, that same size one brush to create those um, fine branches, but I 
oftentimes use my size quadruple zero by Winsor and Newton. That's my favorite detail brush. It really, like, that thing's a workhorse. It it really pays itself back. So I'm I'm not sponsored by Winsor and Newton. I hope maybe one day. Although, why would they pay me if I'm already advertising their products in basically every single video? Um, it would be nice. One thing I'm not afraid to say though is when I don't like a product. So that Princeton brush, sorry Princeton, but that one Princeton brush that I own that looks really fancy and that's why I bought it because it looked fancy and it was expensive so I assumed that it was gonna be a really good brush or maybe I'm just a noob and I don't know how to properly utilize it but man is it bad like I can make it work for some paintings but it is not a good brush I don't recommend it and that's why when people are like oh what what brush is that I'm like it's Princeton but do not buy it because it's not good it may have been the batch also, who knows. But if Princeton were to sponsor me, they'd have to give me a whole whack of their brushes and I'd have to test it out for a while because that one brush I was not happy with. Anyways, I've got some of these got these details down. Um, so I've, I've picked up a lot of dark pigment again, the black and the blue. And I'm going to paint, um, my tree is now going to come out the top here. So. And I'm using my size one to assist me with the bottom so that I don't go past the oval. And I'm also going to use it to help define some of these branches. Okay, so that looks quite nice. I'm going to make the next tree I paint even darker, so less water, more pigment. And I'm going to paint it over here, but this one is not going to extend beyond the uh, circle or the oval. <clears throat> so a little off topic but over the years like I released about two years ago I, I don't know the exact date I released a video that was titled um four techniques to paint pine trees something like that and uh it it really exploded and to this date it has around 150,000 views. It's my most popular video. You guys love it and I do too because I love painting pine trees. But since I released that video, my painting style in pine trees has really grown and evolved and I have so many more intricate techniques that are really easy um, that I utilize in my videos. And I was thinking of creating another video, but this time I'm going to either only make it available on Patreon or maybe even upload it to Skillshare. I'm not sure, but I need to start making revenue 
um, more revenue. I've been doing these free YouTube tutorials for three years now, and I get very, very, very little financial compensation for it. I need to start earning something from all of the work that I put into these videos. Um, so let me know if you would pay for uh, Patreon or Skillshare or some sort of service to access um, a, a video like that. Um, let me know in the comments what you think. So I'm going to go over these video, uh, these videos, some of these trees with a, uh, like a darker part on one side because I want to add a shadow to them. And really, I'm just filling in the white spaces with with these uh, branches. Now, I'm tempted to add a silhouette of a deer over here but I'm nervous that I'm really gonna mess it up if I do that. Okay, I'm gonna just pencil in a deer silhouette. I'm just looking at an image on the internet right now. Um, so it kind of looks, and, and that's what I would, if you're gonna do the same, if you're gonna attempt this, good luck. <laughs> I'm wishing good luck to myself because this is, yeah, I don't know. Why do I choose to do these things that might potential, potentially ruin a very nice painting? So if you're going to do this, please... I mean, if you, you know how to paint the, like a silhouette of a deer out of the top of your head, good for you. I envy you. But if not, just look up a silhouette and then uh, use that. Sometimes what I did in the past, which I, I do recommend, it's a great way to learn, is to print out the silhouette and then cut it out and then place it on your paper and trace it. That's another way that you can do this, but I don't have the patience for that. I'm gonna go a little bit closer, whoops. So you can see me painting the details. And here I am going to take, I'm gonna be using two brushes. I'm gonna be using um, the size one that I've been using the whole time. Uh, as well as my quadruple zero for the very, very fine details. So I'm using black to paint, or maybe I should mix in some blue. It'll look nicer, maybe. And we're just filling this thing in. And luckily you don't really have to erase the pencil for this because we're painting that silhouette very, very dark. So it'll hide the pencil. So I'm going to switch to my finer brush for this top part. I thought I could 
use that other one for the whole thing, but I'm not taking the risk, especially when the bottom turned out so good. So my ears. And now we can paint the antlers. So I was told by my neighbor that stags lose their uh, antlers every single year. And so they have to grow back these ginormous things every year. And I find that a little hard to believe because that's a lot of energy from the animal to grow back these giant horns. And every year, like the older that the stag gets, the more uh, points grow on the horns or the antlers. That didn't turn out half bad. I mean, the antlers could have been a little bit better, but they're a bit too thick for my liking. Um, I might fix that somehow with white acrylic paint, maybe. Okay, now I wanna make this even more exciting. Cause right now it looks, it looks all right. It looks all right. But if we had some snow, it's really going to make it uh, unique. So, so I am grabbing my white acrylic paint, but you can use white gouache or even white out, as I've said in previous videos, that will work too. So taking my paintbrush, taking my white acrylic paint, and we're going to apply it to the branches of our trees first. So we want to make it look like it has snowed a beautiful, fresh, uh, like there's been a fresh snowfall. And part of the reason why I'm adding the snow is because I do want to uh, fix the antlers. And if I use white acrylic paint on the antlers without there being any other white anywhere, it's going to be very obvious that I put the white acrylic paint there. So your trees that are closest to the viewer should be the biggest and the darkest. So their branches are overlapping other trees. And by painting the, um, the snow on top and crossing those trees, it brings them to the forefront even more. So I, I'm tempted to add some snow at the base of my tree, though roots would not have snow on them if they're in the ground, but whatever. Okay. Now I can do what I secretly wanted to do all along which is fix the antlers. I'm almost done here and then we can do that. So I have a, a special quadruple zero brush that is dedicated to acrylic paint. I've said this in previous videos, but I, I used to use this for watercolor and I ruined it. 
I ruined it by using it for acrylic paint, so please don't do that. If you have a really great brush that, that you like for watercolor, don't use it for another medium. Okay, another thing I want to do is add falling snow. Uh, so what I'm doing is um, my white acrylic paint is here and I'm just covering my, I added a little bit of water and I'm covering my brush with that water and the white acrylic paint. Then I'm going to grab another brush here and just tap it. And then as I tap it, that white acrylic paint comes off in these tiny white uh, dots and really creates a beautiful effect that mimics a snowfall. And if you don't like doing that, you could just, you know, dip your brush into the acrylic paint and dab on your snowflakes that is another option though they're just going to be a little bit bigger if you're okay with that there we go so that is our um winter beautiful forest stag deer painting <laughs> i hope you guys enjoyed this one if you did please subscribe to my channel it really helps me out um hitting like on this video also helps my channel and again comment down below what you think about that idea about making another pine tree tutorial um, available on a paid platform thank you so much for watching and i'll see you in the next one